Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zinfin and XDC. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So as we refresh the overall market, we have been kind of bouncing around like the 20K zone on Bitcoin. I'm still expecting us to, you know, come down to test some nice lows. Um, hopefully, you know, we can come down and test about like roughly 16.6K exact build a bottom there on the 300 moving average weekly. And and just go from there, you know, similar to March of 2020. Now, I am recording this a little bit ahead of time. So, you know, hopefully by the time that this does go live, we're basically still ranging around the same point, which I do expect this to actually kind of do. Uh, XDC has been kind of moving slightly to the lows, as you guys do see, sitting at almost two and a half cents earlier today. Uh, still kind of testing the waters on, you know, where we basically are going to head down to. In my opinion, we will get that test of uh, roughly almost two cents exact, either around there or like almost like one cent. Like that's the area that I'm really kind of just eyeing this asset at. So, you know, let's see exactly what happens. Uh, we have been seeing some major updates around Zinfin, uh, more listings and things like that happening. And actually today we've seen a major one. Huobi, new listing on Huobi XDC, Zinfin official. This is actually pretty huge. This actually really really huge i mean honestly in terms of like so first off let me actually open the exchanges in a new tab uh real quick just so that i could show you guys this so when we go to the market you guys do see like gate io you know qcoin etc you know some of these are you know major exchanges but huobi is going to be the one that in my opinion is going to allow for some major demand on you know xdc and why well it's the number seven largest you know, exchange, as you guys do see, like we are on Gate.io, Gate.io and even Qcoin are number five and six. Uh, but, you know, in terms of Huobi, this has $1.7 billion in in terms of like 24 hour, you know, volume, as well as over 868,000 weekly visitors. So this is a very large exchange um, in terms of like the numbers uh, by, you know, follower. Like, obviously, this is like the Huobi, you know, India account. Um, but in terms of like actual Huobi, as you guys do see over here, they have 1.1 million followers. So this is actually fairly large. So do not undermine this at all. Um, I'm actually expecting a lot more top exchanges to be listing, you know, XDC. Remember, we're not even on, you know, Binance, Coinbase, etc. So this has a large amount of, you know, listings ahead of it. And yes, we will see those. Um, in my opinion, you know, when we look at XDC, when we get back into a stability standard within crypto and we are actually starting to move upward, that is the time where we will most likely see XDC uh, start to break out massively as it does get listed on some major exchanges as, you know, again, volume is easier to be reached within XDC. Now, with that in mind, I also want to talk to you guys a little, a little bit more about what is happening around uh, Zinfin in terms of like tokenization of, you know, trade finance and stuff like that. Things are rapidly shifting here. Shout out to uh, Crypto KJ2. Uh, you will see more banks, financial institutions, and general investors finding their way to trade finance. Trade tech is pioneering efforts in the space. XDC Network is part of this revolution. Pay attention to the bigger picture. And of course, from trade tech, they are saying, you know, investors are in search of yields above, you know, comparable benchmarks and trade finance regularly, you know, pays above the risk uh, commensurate uh, yield level. Trade finance, therefore, has all the components that investors look for. Trade tech is such a massive giant. If you guys are not following trade tech by now um, and you do hold XDC, you should 100% be following them. I think that in terms of like the updates that they have been pushing, it's been, you know, really kind of focused on, you know, the, you know, global trade finance uh, market, but also it's been really kind of showing you guys exactly where we are headed to. I mean, just the other day, I shared with you guys uh, this tweet where we were basically seeing, you know, trade finance, you know, emerging as a lifeline and a necessity within not only, you know, like a recession or a depression, if you will, um, but also to, you know, avoid crises around like lending within banks and which we are seeing banks actually hit some major uh, issues right now within not only like liquidity, but also in terms of like funding as well. So this is going to be great. I think that trade finance definitely holds um, a crucial, you know, component role uh, within not only the current, but also the future financial system. And uh, also from ICC, a lot of people have been really kind of looking at this and you know, there's been some speculation. We're going to be talking about it, but we do see we are connecting. We are pioneering. We are evolving. Hashtag we are ICC more on Tuesday. Now, 
obviously since then they have you know pushed updates but the reason why i bring this up is because you know we have been seeing a lot of people kind of speculate saying like hashtag we are icc reminds me of hashtag we are xdc and it definitely is something possible like icc has some huge connections to some of the largest trade finance you know giants out there i also think that when we look at like icc we should definitely be kind of you know comparing and contrasting on like where we basically are within the trade finance area from like zinfin to some of the larger names within the icc so it definitely does like to me personally like when we talk about like the bridge connections to icc from you know zinfin side like with trade tech and like the trade finance area um i would say that this is most likely kind of connected to xdc and zinfin uh, from just a trade finance perspective now talking about trade finance we also do have this pdf file from november 2020 blockchain and dlt in trade where do we stand now this is from the tfg and also the wto and they are actually talking about where you know dlt basically is headed within this market and i think that when we talk about like you know dlt itself i think that this is going to streamline the process of almost every single industry out there that is lacking efficiencies we do see here dlt uses in trade for an example dlt in trade is usually used for two primary purposes track and trace to enhance transparency and how goods are being processed and two, the digitization of trade processes aka tokenizing you know trade documents and uh this really kind of pivots to you know what i really kind of talked to you guys about a lot with like xdc or zinfim so they are mentioning and let me kind of zoom in here i know that it could be a little bit hard to read um they are mentioning a few dlt you know projects here's the table of blockchain and dlt projects in trade including the stage uh the projects and companies are at and uh you can see a few of them um it's funny though because we aren't really seeing like for example like we do see um a few names here like for example trade Phoenix is here don't know if trade tech is here it's kind of hard to really kind of see we do see anigio um pretty interesting names um and i'm not seeing uh trade tech just yet but um in terms of a large amount of these names a, a few of these are actually you know already connected to zinfin like trade Finex. uh anigio has some you know direct connections with them as well uh, you can see the color le uh, legend over here like trade finance initiative supply chain initiatives and things like that um in terms of, like the green these are the network of networks here as you guys do see anigio is actually over here in supply chain digitization a large amount of these names you should definitely know of like cargo x etc um, because a large amount of these names are also already in direct connection with Zinfin as well. And uh, of course, the sources are like blockchain and DLT projects and trade of reality check by ICC, TFG, WTO. Like these are the names behind trade finance and DLTs, which again, really kind of takes me to the next step here is like, you know, in terms of like DLT adoption and digitization, like we know that Zinfin has proven their point within this market uh you know digitizing the first trade document um with i believe it was trade tech actually uh so that's interesting as well and of course they are mentioning uh trade Phoenix yet again here uh numerous initiatives leveraging dlt to enhance supply chain and transparency and ease to access to financing so yeah a, a large amount of these names definitely are doing some pretty big things there's a large amount of use cases within uh this market but like i said the connections that zinfin does have uh with a large amount of these names to me it's a clear winner and i i really do think that as a like a trade finance giant they have become like the chosen one if you will uh within this market and i've said this the other day as well um in my video talking about the three chosen ones you know xrp xdc and even xlm uh these are the ones to really kind of focus on and we do see our xdc this hybrid method enables trade finex because again talking about trade finex uh to give accredited investors you know with information on their virtual asset net worth in addition to the option to tokenize offline commitments from originators of course you guys do see over here uh within this you guys can see that entire breakdown here uh tokenization not only within like you know even trade finance but even outside of trade finance like tokenization is taking over i want you guys to understand like if you can invest into an asset like for an example xdc that is tokenizing and focus on disrupting massive amounts of not only money markets but also huge use cases within those money markets that is something significant because again the way that i kind of look at this like xdc being a settlement token not only like on zinfin but also like r3 corda for an example as more and more volume actually you know kind of we'll just say crosses over you know something like a tokenized bridge 
I, I kind of like I, I'm trying to like talk the best way that I could really kind of describe this to you guys. But the best way that I could like say this is just like imagine the massive amount of money that will flow over something like this use case, like for example, tokenizing uh, trade finance documents, right? It's really disrupting a $19 trillion market, but it's disrupting massive amounts of money that flows over that market, you know, year to date. So when you look at that, and you're talking about like year over year over year volume and value, the asset itself, the trade, you know, settlement token is going to continue to drastically increase in value. Meaning as you hodl this asset long term, the amount of volume and value that that asset is going to not only unlock, but move and also gain is going to be drastically increased as it gets, you know, utilized more and more. This is why these utility tokens are such huge opportunities right, right now in this market as it is, you know, a speculated market because of the value that they will ultimately move and unlock. This is huge. Now, also, we do see down here, TradeFinex intends to provide a liquidity aggregator service utilizing on-chain tokens in the future as well. So that's also pretty uh, big. And uh, they are mentioning as well, like, Validus, Mass, um, MAS, uh, regulated in Singapore, and Nijio, Ramco, Singapore, ITFA, and WOA uh, are the existing players who pay network utility fees to obtain access to the platform. And uh, again, these are some pretty big names. We talked about Anigio, um, obviously ITFA, you guys are probably all aware of. Uh, these are large names in the space, uh, especially, you know, resulting around, or I should say, you know, revolving around uh, trade finance. Now, last but not least, I want to directly connect you guys to DTCC. So here we have DTCC. We have, you know, our capabilities. Today, we stand at the center of global trading activity, processing trillions of dollars of securities transactions on a daily basis. This is huge. But where's the connection to XDC here? Well, let's dive in. So um, first off, this Medium post, Zinfin speaks at Blockchain for Finance Conference, North America. This is from Zinfin, XDC, as you guys do see, going back to 2018. Funny thing is, is that if we scroll down, so first off, they're t talking about like some of their partners, like you know, KPMG is there, um, Ernst & Young, Oracle, etc. I mean, of course, you guys do see like all the names here. Even EY, like Ernst & Young is huge. Um, also, TradeFinex was there. Um, and of course, like Oracle, KPMG, et cetera, like I said. Um, but down here is where things kind of get interested. So the motto of the conference was, you know, consolidation, interoperability, crypto assets, the digital platform, business case, regulation, and compliance. Talking all about, you know, basically where we are headed, things like that. Um, here's a few snapshots of, you know, Atoll um, pre presenting Zinfin and Trade Phoenix. You guys have it down here or... Um, right here, like private network generates hash sends to public network, public uh, public network decentralized verification of hash and digital time stamping. Basically, you know, talking about it. Uh, here's the sandbox, you know, Reg Lab license as well. Um, and the funny thing is, is here we have a few names. So Chris Neal, head of American development, Zenfin at panel discussion on stage with uh, Sunil uh shala i hope i'm saying that right director of business architecture barclays artem uh, i'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name uh director of business development and innovation fintech strategy dtcc todd McDa uh, mcdonald co-founder and head of partnerships r3 um these are some large names I and mean, here's a direct connection to dtcc obviously they know who they are uh they're processing trillions of dollars a day um, and I'm sure that they are racking up paper documents and things like that. Uh, if you could tokenize it and digitize it, that's going to be a huge disruption. In my opinion, Zinfin will. We actually do see over here, a uh, shout out to Don XDC, DTCC will utilize XTC, the R3 core domain settlement mechanism, R3 use cases, uh, capital market, uh, digital assets, digital identity, energy, GovTech, healthcare, insurance, real estate, supply chain, trade finance, telecommunications, trillions of dollars a day. Uh, nothing to see here. This is huge. This is why I say like, you know, focus on what uh, Zenfin is doing and where they are building. Here's capital markets, digital assets, digital identity, energy, government tech, uh, you know, healthcare. Second slide, as you guys do see, insurance, real estate, supply chain, telecommunications, trade finance. Um, and here we have, you know, this is from Investopedia, how, you know, the depository trust and clearing corporation DTCC works. They process trillions of dollars a day on a daily basis. 
Um, DTCC settlements uh, settles transactions between buyers and sellers of securities and plays a critical role in automating, centralizing, standardizing, and streamlining the world's financial markets. And last but not least, of course, we do see build multi-party applications that deliver trust. And this is from R3 Corda. Application builders include DTCC, Wells Fargo, MoneyGram, MasterCard, uh, Six Swiss Exchange, and NASDAQ. These are the big ones. And I've talked to you guys about um, XDC being the settlement token on the R3 Corda massive um, you know, ecosystem. This is what you want to focus on. These are trillion dollar use cases. Like I said, this is why I say XDC is extremely undervalued at less than a $400 million market cap. And uh, we look at even like the fully diluted market cap at $1 billion. And yes, like I said, we can come down a little bit lower, but I have been averaging in. I have been averaging on a weekly basis because guys, I am accumulating this massively. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, after you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.